Well, welcome in once again, everybody, to what promises to be another interesting, relevant, exciting, whatever you want to call it, edition of the 19th Hole Podcast for Golfers, coming to you live from the beautiful Rigel Studios, right in the heart of the entertainment capital of the world. And no, it's not Hollywood. It's Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Dennis Silvers, and we've got a great, great show for you today. we got kind of an exclusive. You're really going to enjoy this uh uh, this gentleman, because he's been involved in a tremendous amount of stuff, and uh, you'll see how it all ties in. There's a lot of stuff going on right now in the golf world. You know, we've been talking about the Live Tour and what's going on there. We've got the FedEx Cup playoff going on. We've got the antitrust lawsuit going on against the PGA Tour, but there's another lawsuit that is going on that's making a lot of new, uh, a lot of news, uh, a lot of discussion, and uh, we're fortunate enough to have the gentleman that's uh, very, very much involved in that. Let me give you a little bit about uh, Larry Clayman is an attorney at law who graduated from Duke University with a BA in political science and French literature. Uh, in 1974. So if it's French literature, you know this guy's got to be a romantic at heart. I've got to ask him. Larry received his JD from Emory University Law School in 1977. Uh, he founded an organization called Judicial Watch, which he is really no longer associated with, but did form Freedom Watch, which I'm sure all of you heard after uh, an un unsuccessful uh, pursuit of uh, running for office for U.S. Senate uh, from Florida. Uh, Larry is the author of three books that uh, we'll also talk about briefly. And Larry has filed a lot of lawsuits against some of the most high profile people on the planet and just to give you an example, and I hope we have a, a little bit of time to touch base on those, uh, against the Clinton administration, Bill and Hillary Clinton, okay? Both against Bill and Hil uh, Hillary Clinton. He filed a suit against Barack Obama, against Joe Biden and his son Hunter, which you're very familiar with, and many, many, many more. In 2002, Larry sued the PGA Tour regarding the suspension of players who participate in the current LVI golf tournament, sued them for antitrust, and they're in the middle of that. His latest is representing a tour player probably very familiar with. His name is Patrick Reed, who is suing the Golf Channel and Brandel Chambly for defamation and that's going to be very very interesting so without further ado let's bring up our man of the hour or man of the 30 minutes whatever you be mr larry <laughs> clayman and thanks Thank so much uh, thanks so much uh, for taking time out i know you've got a hearing right after this but i'm loving your hat tell everybody where you got that larry well i got it at, at bedminster and at the back it uh, makes reference to the fact that it's trump's club and he's right. obviously endorsed live and I think that has raised the ire of some of the people in the leftist media that Trump supports this and believes in it. And I believe in it. It's a great product. It's a yeah. tremendous product. And it's complimentary to the PGA Tour. There's no reason that they should be fighting. In fact, they could have tournaments on different weekends and, and get along. But that isn't the case because, as I allege, in an antitrust suit that I filed in Palm Beach, Florida, I'm the lead plaintiff. It's a class action. Uh, it deprives consumers of the ability to, to see both sets of players and will raise the price of tickets. But there's no reason why uh, the PGA Tour should be so comatose, for yeah. lack of a better word, and use very blatant anti-competitive practices to try to kill live in his infancy. They yeah. both can live together, no pun intended. No, I, I get that. And there are a lot of other tours around the world. Sure, some don't uh, uh, get directly involved with the PGA Tour, but, you know, there's room for everything. And the whole object is, you know, to help grow the game, to help expose all of these players. And I think for a long time, Larry, and I've said this, I think the PGA Tour, the upper echelon, starting with the commission who I think should be fired. Uh, I think there's a lot of elitism within that organization. Do you agree? 
No, I do agree. And that's what got me going, because uh, you pointed it out. I'm the founder of Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch. I was an international trade lawyer believing in free competition, not unfair practices, but free trade. I believe, And I was with the antitrust division as a young lawyer in the Justice Department and helped break up the AT&T telephone monopoly. I believe in competition. So I turned the TV on one day and I see Jay Monahan giving a press conference on Golf Channel. He's gritting his teeth. He's grimacing. He's threatening live players. Uh, he is alluding to the Saudi League. That's not the name. He's trashing right. the Prince of Saudi Arabia. And, and the fact is, is that Saudi Arabia uh, should be encouraged to come into the 21st century. The prince loves golf. He's a great golfer himself, apparently. Uh-huh. He has 14 golf courses that he built. And he also is opening that country up to greater rights for women, uh, high-tech cities. He even is allowing for, for Judaism uh, through a rabbi to be practiced in Saudi Arabia. Interesting. I mean, if you can believe that. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a very progressive guy, and they're and they're trashing him because they claim there's a CIA report that he participated in the death of this Washington Post journalist. Well, when was the last time the CIA was right about anything? Last time I looked, they claimed there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, which later gave rise to tens of thousands of Americans being killed yeah. and hundreds of thousands wounded. So he, I'm sorry. Yeah. To use that deep tactic, I immediately took a dislike to Jay Monahan of the PGA Tour. Yeah, no, and, and I, that one thing gave to the next. I started to play, t- pay attention to what's going on. Yep, yep, and uh, I, I, I totally agree with you. You know, it's funny as you, as you know, Greg Norman has been talking with the commissioner of the LPGA Tour, and I think if they get some women events over there, Larry, in addition to the additional events that they're going to start having next year, this is going to add a lot of credibility to it, don't you think? Oh, it will. The, the women want to uh, accommodate. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. And and the women already, already have many golf tournaments financed by Ramco, which is cool. owned by Saudi Arabia. Right. There's a, there's a huge amount of Saudi investment here, which even flows through to the tour, PGA Tour, through its sponsors at a minimum. So this whole thing is conjured up. It's it's defamatory. And here's the bottom line. And this is the case I filed on behalf of Patrick Reed, a very fine gentleman, someone who's one of the top golfers in the world, yep, yep. nine PGA Tour victories, Masters, yep. I don't need to tell you, you're, you're a golf aficionado. But he and others have been continuously defamed by Brandel Shambly, most particularly Brandel Shambly. Called him a cheater, he's not. Uh, you know, tried to destroy him to get ratings on Golf Channel. Now, Patrick and the rest of the live players are being called murderers, they're being called terrorist sympathizers, they're wow. being called Takers of blood money. This is so clearly defamatory. It's going to cost Shambly and Golf Channel a lot, lot of money. And we sued for seven hundred fifty million dollars because sponsors, you know, have been been uh, scared off. Yeah. And and many other things have happened. Emotional distress and everything else. Randall Shambly, you know, cannot control what he says. And if you go back a few years, he even accused Tiger Woods of cheating. And Tiger Woods's agent, Mark Steinberg threatened him with a lawsuit for mm-hmm. doing that. Mm-hmm. And it was never shown that Tiger did cheat. It's never been shown that Patrick did either, but he just can't control himself. Let me ask you this, Larry. I, I know that you have filed a number of these, but in general, why is it so damn hard to prove a defamation uh, lawsuit, particularly when a person like Shambly uh, is an analyst a uh, commentator kind of maybe giving his opinion on things. Does that present some some difficult barriers to get over, Larry? Well, Shambly and Golf Channel have gone far beyond opinion. Okay, the, to call someone murderers is not opinion. To call someone taking blood money is not opinion. To call someone t- a terrorist sympathizer is not opinion. So he's way beyond that. and. The fact is that, you know, some of the leftist media who is trying to spin this right now, and I was listening to PGA Tour Radio yesterday, these two clowns, I forget their names, coming on around uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, laughing, carrying on, disparaging Patrick, disparaging his wife, disparaging me, um, low class. Uh, They don't understand the law. And they said, oh, you can't win a case against a public figure. That's not true. 
Uh, I've won cases against public figures. I get to fame myself, and I don't turn the other cheek. I settled two in the last few weeks. Uh, so that's not that's a false statement. And the standard is either a false statement or publishing something with reckless disregard for the truth. Right. And on top of that, is, there's a thing called constitutional malice. When you have it in for somebody, when you show animus, maliciousness, that raises an inference of the actual malice. Yeah. So you can win. Look at Johnny Depp. You know, he yeah. just won. He's a public figure. Yeah. So that is complete BS. And that's what they're spinning. And here's the kicker, too, is that this isn't just Brandel, Shamley and Golf Channel. They're in the hip pocket. They're collaborators with the PGA Tour, yeah. with the DP World Tour. They basically yeah. do what they're told. They have huge contracts yeah. with both. And they are frightened to death that another network will start covering live. Yeah, no, I I, uh, I agree with you. That's well said. Uh, last question before we take our first short break, uh, Larry. What did you think of them flying Tiger Woods out to kind of rah-rah some of the young players and talk to them about why they should stay on the PGA Tour, why they should not jump ship? When here's a guy who's made millions from uh, appearance fees overseas. Here's a guy who cheated on his wife, cheated on his girlfriend, uh, multitudinous things. I, to me, he's got no credibility, and they bring him in. Do you think that was I, – I think it was a total waste of time. And I said, if these guys it's listen a, to him, they're nuts. It's desperation. Yeah. Okay, desperation. You're right. And, you know, and Tiger, look, I give him credit for trying to – better himself after he really screwed up big time sure, with his sure. life and you know and pharmaceutical drugs and women and prostitutes and everything else but he tried to pull himself out of it uh you know he, he destroyed his body he's got no career left you no. know high level that's right. clear and, and therefore he's looking for relevancy so therefore he has to become the golf messiah of these munchkins right that uh, are part of the pga tour you know what's really offensive is that people like Justin Thomas and and Davis Love the Third and Billy Herschel and others are trashing the live players personally? Correct. And Justin Thomas, uh, just, you know, in the last few weeks has been saying, "Well, the antitrust cases that were brought against the PGA Tour, PGA Tour, is a 501c6 mm -hmm. nonprofit corporation. Mm -hmm. These cases are being brought against you, players personally. That was a lie." That's false. And I referenced that in my complaint on behalf of Patrick as well. You can go to LarryClayman.com and read it. You know, this is, they're trying to create division and dissension among yeah. the players. And that's really despicable. It's completely yeah. despicable because yeah. live players have no animosity. They're friends with people on the PGA Tour. Right. And oh, they have yeah. the right to compete. All of them. Yep. Compete. And, and the big thing here is, Dennis, is the... Uh, OG, uh, OWGR world point rankings. Right. This is what uh, Lib's lawyers did not emphasize at the hearing in front of this very leftist judge, uh, Freeman, in the Northern District of California. Uh, the case should never have been brought in that court. I mean, that's the, the worst court in the land. But that notwithstanding, is that it was the denial of these OGW, OWGR points which will keep live players from playing in the majors and world tournaments of which the PGA does not control. Correct. But yet the PGA board members uh, like Monaghan, the commissioner, and and Keith Pelly, the commissioner of DP World right. Tour, who are trying to destroy live, they sit on that board. Yeah. So, uh, to decide how you decide world ranking points, which qualify for the majors and, and world tournaments. Mm -hmm. So this is very anti-competitive. And that should have been emphasized at that hearing, and it wasn't. And I will bring it up in the antitrust lawsuit that I filed and in other venues because that is the big point yeah, in terms of right. the anti-competitive actions. You're, abs you're absolutely right. Right on point. Larry, stay with us. We're going to uh, subway, take a real short break, and then we're going to back uh, more with you and, and talk about a whole lot of more interesting stuff. So more with Larry Klayman right after this. Are you an E or a C? Both have Ridgeback. These are loaded with tech. Which one are you gaming? Definitely E for me. It's just so forgiving. I'm definitely an E. C is for Cheka. What else? C is for kill it. C is me. Low spinning bombs. So, are you an E or a C? Hmm. I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. 
pound for pound, nothing comes close. back with the pride of Emory University Law School, Mr. Larry Clayman. Larry, let me change track a little bit. Number one, what got you interested in law, wanting to become a lawyer? And secondly, what got you interested in playing the game of golf? Because I know you love to play golf. Well, number one, to be a lawyer, you can do almost anything. Okay, it gives you the legal background to do it. Unfortunately, with the way the courts and judges are today, it's difficult in the political arena uh, to get any of these judges, Democrat or Republican, to stick their neck out. We see, of course, what's been happening, you know, with regard to Donald Trump and others right. who have been victimized. As far as golf is concerned, my dad loved golf, and he taught me the game of golf. I had a few lessons later, and uh, it's a great opportunity for a father to teach a son, you know, ethics and Right. and how to deal with people and to take adversity because in the course of a golf round you're going to hit some bad shots and you'll have to learn how to deal with it not throw your clubs you know and carry on <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing and, and so after i became a lawyer and started judicial watch i was in washington dc for a well over 20 years and the weather is so bad it's so hot and humid in the mm -hmm. summertime mm -hmm. the pollution i stopped playing and i got wrapped up in fighting these politicians and government people. And I didn't play for 30 years. Wow. And uh, a few years ago, I'd say three or four years ago, I lost track. I played again at a really good course uh, in Northern California, in Truckee, and uh, called Coyote Moon. Uh -huh. And it, I just it, just, it just caught me again. And I said, boy, I really love this game. I can't believe I've wasted 30 years. Wow. So, yeah. you know, I, I took it up again. I was scratched when I was a kid in high school and at Duke University and now I'm an eight handicap and I don't get to play as much as I like you know on weekends mostly yeah but I love the game of golf and it, and it takes my mind off of all sure. the sadness that regrettably is in the world today yeah well eight handicap is still a very very nice player I know you've got offices all over but what what where are you living and where do you mostly play I, I live mostly in Florida, Florida. okay I travel to California and and also DC only when required <laughs> these yeah. days. Uh, but uh, when I'm down in in Florida, I play a PGA National. Believe it or not, I guess maybe I might not be welcome <laughs> anymore there. <laughs> but but uh, it's you know it's, it's a course that I play and yeah. in, in Florida and other courses too. So I, I played out your way a few months ago at TPC Las Vegas, great yeah. course. Yep. And I hope to come out and play around with you. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I told you, you're more than welcome. Anytime you want to come out, I'd love to go out and tee it up with you for a couple of rounds. How do how do these complainants find you, like Patrick Reed? Okay, I'm going to sue that son of a gun. I need a really good attorney. That How do they, how do they find you? All of these I, other people that you have represented in all these massive suits against, you know, the Clintons and Barack Obama and, and the foundation and... How do, how do they get to you? Well, uh, you can see some of our clients in my private capacity at LarryClayman.com or go to FreedomWatchUSA.org. But uh, they find me because I have a reputation of uh, being a tough lawyer, being fearless and not worrying about, you know, what people think. Mm -hmm. And I have represented a lot of parties, whether it's Clive and Bundy out your way at right. Bunkerville successfully, whether it's Sheriff Joe Arpaio in, in Phoenix 
or whether it's Derry Corsi, who I kept from getting indicted during the, the Robert Mueller investigation. Right. I can't say specifically how the, the Reeds found me as attorney client, but I can tell you this. We are so much alike. Uh, I have great respect and admire Patrick and his wife, Justine. They're fighters. They don't roll over and they're not going to take it anymore. I mean, he, this is a really fine gentleman and, and they're, they're a fine couple and they don't deserve what has been levied against them. And the reason it is that you have to have, you know, somebody that's going to boost ratings. You have to have somebody you're going to beat up on. It makes more money for well, golf channels. Of course, channel. of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's disgusting. And I, and I have become regrettably an expert in defamation. And I think on the, the plaintiff's side, I'm the, if I do say so myself, the preeminent es- expert on defamation, not only because of my clients, but I myself get defamed. Mm-hmm. And I do not turn the other cheek. Once right. it happens, bam. You got you you go. Uh I know we're getting a little bit of short on time. When do you think uh, I know you just got things in motion with Patrick? When do you think something's going to start happening? You going in for a hearing, you get a, a trial date set. What's going on with that? Well, we're currently serving the complaint. Uh and in fact, I just learned from a process server that no one was home at Randall's house. We'll find them. Don't worry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's probably hiding outside yeah. somewhere. In the place. <laughs> but uh, we'll find them and, and it'll move forward. And it's in federal court in Houston. So you have a case management conference first and then you move to discovery. They'll challenge the complaint, I'm sure. Yeah. But they'll lose because it's very clear on its face that this was defamatory and it'll proceed ahead. As far as Florida is concerned, my class action in a in a trust case, we did get service on the PGA tour and also Monahan. Monahan also tried to to evade service, by the way. Interesting, I might add. And uh, but his lawyer accepted for him down there, and it's moving forward with discovery. It's, it moves things things move faster in state court in Florida, so yeah, okay. that's going to go pretty quick. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely fantastic. I think I told you, too, I, I co-host a, a wonderful political show uh, with a gal by the name of Stephanie Phillips. We call it Pick Your Politics. And I talked to you a little bit about it. And you very gracious, graciously said that when you're available, you'd love to come on. And we would love to come have you come on and talk to you about a, a plethora of things like, you know, election integrity is the big thing right now. And this and that and the other, and and we hope that you will consider that, and uh, we could reach out to you and and you'll come. I would on. love to. Yeah, I would love to, and I, you know, and I love talking about golf too. I mean, you know, it's 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 my passion that in photography. Yeah. Okay. And in, oh. and in the old days, French literature. <laughs> I like. So, I could yeah. say, are you are you yeah. a romantic then? French literature, I love. I, Why I, French literature? No, I am a romantic. I studied uh, French for eight years. I, I studied in France in my junior year at Duke. Um, the French are much maligned as well, I might say, for, yeah. as a general rule. They're much like the Americans. They're very stubborn people, essentially. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, there are several books that I read which really influenced my life. Uh, the Stranger by Albert Camus and, Vol- and uh, Candide by Voltaire. Mm-hmm. And I guess you might call me a, a religious existentialist. Okay. In some ways, I believe that we have to. God will only help us if we help ourselves. Yeah. We have to make, we have to make our own order to the universe. You know, in His in His name. So I'm kind of in between an existentialist and a evangelical. Yeah, no, I love that. I I absolutely love that. Larry, we'll get you. We'll let you go. I appreciate your time so much. I know your squeezes in between uh, hearings and stuff. I will get back to you sooner than later. And uh, it's been absolutely great. And I I wish you all the luck in the world going forward with uh, with all your litigation. Thank you. Well, I've got some great clients and and I've got a great cause to promote golf worldwide. It brings people together. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. We'll get get you back sooner than later. Thank you very much, Larry. I appreciate it. God bless. Larry, interesting, interesting man. He's been involved in some of these lawsuits with some of these people of of just huge notoriety is uh, very interesting. All right, we're going to step away, take another shorty. We'll be back. We're going to close up the show. Hey golfers, I've been a golf talk show host for a long time and I've been playing golf even longer. 
Being in golf media, I've had the chance to play every ball ever made. I've tried them all. Well, my search is finally over because I found the best ball I have ever played with. And more and more golfers are finding the same thing. I started playing with the Elixir Golf Ball made by Encore Golf. Encore Golf has revolutionized both their golf balls, the Elixir or the Avant 55, or the brand new Zero X1, to where the performance of either will simply blow you away. It did me. If you're looking for better performance and durability with your ball, Encore Golf has it. Don't just take my word for it. Check them out at EncoreGolf.com and you'll become convinced as I am the first time you tee it up with Encore. It's the best performing ball for the price. Go to EncoreGolf.com and see for yourself. Your scores will love you for it. That's O-N-C-O-R-E Golf.com. As golfers, we want instant gratification when it comes to a better golf swing and playing better golf. Impossible you say? Not anymore. Golf Boost Artificial Intelligence AI, has developed and patented the most advanced swing analysis technology in golf. Simply, the algorithms detect your body position and then analyze your golf swing using their artificial intelligence technology. The AI captures all the relevant data from your swing video and then presents you a personalized lesson. Golf Boost AI is the ultimate swing analysis and virtual instruction system for golfers of all ages and abilities. This sophisticated software takes into consideration your height and build, playing level, and returns the ideal solution for your swing. Bottom line, Golf Boost AI is an incredibly convenient and cost-effective tool for golfers to improve their swing. Go to GolfBoost.com and check it out. The app is free to download and try. Visit GolfBoost.com today. Innovation begins at a single point. Elements, each with their unique character. Fire Forge Steel creates unprecedented control. Chemistry delivers a touch so soft, combined to create a level of performance previously unimagined. Like magic, the elixir, the new tour ball from Encore. I think it was a very, very interesting uh, interview with Larry Clayman. Obviously, we're going to have him back, and we're going to follow what's going on with his antitrust against the tour and, of course, with Patrick Reed. And I bet you he gets a few other players to file whatever. Anyway, this is the last time we get to speak about the event that's happening tomorrow, uh, the 19th, out at Angel Park for Children of Fallen Heroes. Uh, that raises money to support the families and children of uh, Army veterans, first responders that have died in the line of duty. It's a fantastic tournament. I don't know for sure, but you might want to go to childrenoffallenheroes.org and check that out. Availability or call Angel Park Golf Club if you're local right here in Las Vegas and join us. They've got a lot of stuff going. You're going to play uh, 18 holes of golf. You're going to have a great lunch. Uh, they've got prizes to give out, raffles. There's people going to be jumping out of a helicopter before uh, everybody tees off. It's going to be fantastic. So if you've got any time and you want to support a great cause, uh, give that a look or, or call uh, Angel Park. And I'm going to lucky enough to be uh, the MC out there tomorrow. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the 19th Old Podcast for Golfers. I'm your host, Dennis Silvers. Wishing you nothing but fairways and greens. We'll see you right back here, same time, same place, next week with another show. So, so long, everybody.